Mike McDougall lived here in northern Cape Breton, isolated from the mainstream of the island's fiddling tradition. But distance or remoteness made no difference in his sharing his music, even if it meant returning early in the morning and only having a few hours to rest before going out to fish. His energy was incredible. Uh, we used him uh, a lot in jobs that, uh, oh, they were a little special to us, and we'd bring in Mike, and uh, almost as soon as he'd walk in, uh, we'd start to, to work at a new level, and I, I think Mike generated excitement and passed it on. It was a very contagious thing. His playing was always considered exciting. I think that's one thing you have to say. He was a consistent player, but a, a very exciting musician as well. And he was a man that, that loved people, loved the, to the presence of, of large crowds of people, it was, uh, it was a joy for him to, to feel an obligation to, uh, to respond to the people in a way to make them happy, to make them feel good about themselves, to make their, their music something important to them. And, and Mike, Mike just had a, uh, a certain quality, a certain finesse about reaching people and, and uh, sharing with them uh, so much of himself and asked really very little in return. So he, he was a fine man, he was a gentleman, he was loved by, by the entire Cape Breton community and, and really by, by people beyond the island who, who knew him uh, for his music. Mike was so old, um, always the great uh, thing about Mike I feel was the gift to share part of himself with other people. Like if there was a charity concert to be run here or there, it didn't matter, he'd get there. And if he wasn't asked, he'd be disappointed. Uh, always in his own community. I mean, I was talking to Father Danny up there the other day and he said, the great help, they don't know what they're going to do without Mike. But um, he's a great loss, but on the other hand, he has, uh, he touched so many young people, like David McIsaac. Uh, young John Ferguson, who are now playing the fiddle, and Dave McIsaac is going to be a great fiddler and a great musician. I think Mike played a huge, had a huge influence in his music. Loads of time, as I said, for kids and younger people. Sheldon, what is it about a Cape Breton fiddler that uh, that will get him to a Cayley at a moment's notice and play for charitable organizations or for a family that perhaps is burned out for for next to nothing or give freely of their time? Where does that quality come from? Well, I believe, Glenn, that the fiddlers themselves, as they, as they uh, work hard at their music over the years, as they experience a certain style of living, and it's that style of living that is an integral part of the way they perform. It's an integral part of what they perform. And so they know what it is, perhaps, uh, to be in need of something whether it's a need that they themselves felt as individuals themselves in their own homes or in their own communities, or if it was a need that they know a member of their own families experienced. And without being in, an, in some kind of need, without being deprived of something in life, perhaps the depth and the quality of the music that we hear in the fiddlers would not be there, you see. And it is something of the deprivation that they've experienced that allowed them to, 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 to be satisfied at a small Cayley in a rural village playing the fiddle or to be in their very own home playing the fiddle on a Saturday evening. That was simple entertainment, that was a simple style of living and that was fine. Now when the fiddler was called upon to, to provide uh, his talent or her talent to help someone in need they know what that is, they know what that need is, and uh, they want to respond. I can't perhaps give you the dollars to help that person that's burned out, but I can give you my music. And if that can bring people together who in turn would leave dollars, then uh, I feel good about that. And I think Mike was the sort of person that, uh, if you can allow your emotions to, uh, to travel through your instrument and out into the world, I think Mike was the kind of person that whatever was inside of him, it came out through his violin, and uh, not only his playing normally, but his compositions reflected a, a great soul. And We're all familiar with a lot of Cape Breton fiddlers, but uh, with Mike it was somehow different. Uh, he gained popularity very quickly. How did that come about? Well, I, I believe that 
We watch the younger fiddlers over the years evolve. We watch them come through the various uh, uh, small sessions of music, whether it be in the home or in the small local parishes. And we know that young fiddler has has a contact with uh, with a known fiddler. We know that that young fiddler's roots are deep in traditional and Celtic music. And over the years, we watched them grow, and uh, uh, we're still doing that. There's young fiddlers today, young musicians, and we know that in the next uh, five to ten years, they're going to blossom as the real leaders musically on the island. Mike McDougall sort of was. Um, was an accomplished fiddler. But I recall when Mike came on the scene in, in, in the early 60s, and as I said, it appeared, as I reflect now, that uh, he may have said to himself, well, uh, yes, I do have to be at the boats at 5.30 tomorrow morning. In spite of that, I'm going to Big Pond, or I'm going to Glendale, or I'm going to Broadcove, and I'm going to perform. And when he did that, as I've said, so accomplished uh, w with his own music by that time, that uh, it just sparked the audience, literally sparked the audience. And uh, the finesse in his personality uh, captured the audience, and it just came across. And we would see it as he would mingle with people. And his music, a very particular and unique uh, blend and tone to his fiddling that would stand out. Uh, for my ear, uh, I hear in, uh, in Mike's music, uh, something very similar to what we hear in good Gaelic piping. And that may be uh, because Mike's father was a piper. And I'm sure that uh, Mike's father, uh, his father's music influenced how he played the fiddle.